Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Deputy Secretary, for being here today and for your work. Senator Kane and I just came from a hearing at the Armed Services Committee on the presentation on the Commission on our National Defense Strategy. They said two things that I think are really relevant for this conversation. First, that we are facing the most dangerous global environment at any time since World War II, the end of World War II. And second, that we need an approach that coordinates all elements of our national power, which has been part of the discussion that we've heard this morning. Um, and I just want to, at the risk of beating a dead issue, I want to go back to the nominations. And I'm sorry that our colleagues on the other side of the aisle aren't here, because China continues to prioritize their diplomatic engagement, their ambassadors around the world, particularly in the global south, as you pointed out. And yet, we can't get our ambassadors approved, even the career ambassadors, um, not just in Africa and um, South America, but also in places like Albania and Montenegro, yeah. in the Western Balkans, where Albania, um, many in Albania see it as a, a direct affront that we still don't have an ambassador in Albania after they've been willing to take um, Afghans when we needed to evacuate Afghanistan, when they've been willing to take Iranians from Camp Ashraf to help us out. Um, and we still have our career ambassadors to Albania and Montenegro being held up on the other side of the aisle. Senator Barrasso, I'm glad you got here because this is a conversation that I think is important for everybody. Um, I would echo what you had to say about Dorothy Shea, who I had the good fortune to work with when she was ambassador to Lebanon. She is the reason I believe we were able to get out a New Hampshire citizen who was being held um, detained by the Lebanese government for months, who got cancer while he was in the detention. And to have a career ambassador like Dorothy Shea being held up for partisan political reasons is antithetical to the national security of the United States. Yeah. So is this not a concession to the PRC that we should never be making? Yeah, look, uh, I could not agree more uh, with that. First of all, let me say I was, it was great to see uh, uh, you in London, uh, Senator. I also appreciated meeting your husband. We are going to the Celtics game. Sorry, the only two Good. tickets, so that's the way it's going to be. Um, just to your particular question, I, I do want to just say uh, the effect that it has on morale of the people that I work with. Um, you know, if you're in government or you, you know, kind of walk down the street and you're a military officer, every single person tells you, thank you for your service, a little salute and such. Almost every week I get a letter from someone um, who is somewhat surprised that a foreign service officer has helped them in a time of difficulty when they're, they, they're, they're ill or something, and they, they write a note, and they're like, I'm surprised by this. Like, I, I don't know why I'm surprised, but this person went beyond the call to help me in, and my family in their time of need. And I, I think there is a tendency not to recognize the unbelievable competence and patriotism of these people, and no one tells them thank you for your service. Um, I, I, I think we should do that for the military folks, absolutely. But we need to recognize that these people are often working in harm's way, lesser resources, under enormous duress. You see them yourself. You're out there traveling. I, I, I think, as I tried to say, I, I think there are often real issues. Take it out on the political people. Take it out on me. Our career people deserve to be able to serve. When I meet with them, and it's been two years as they're waiting. I, I don't have a good answer for that. I, and, and, and I also think it makes me feel like I can't do my job persuading people that I respect to, to, to get on with this, to move this on. And trust me, there is not one country where we're contesting China, where we go to that country and we've got a strong ambassador and China doesn't have someone. Listen, they're, I, they're out there and we need more people on I, the field. I couldn't agree more. Um, I do have a question about China, um, just with the little bit of time I have left, and that is as we're looking at the potential for an expansion of a broader war in the Middle East with Israel targeting southern Lebanon, 
um, because of the horrible acts of Hezbollah. Uh, what is, where is China going to come down on this, and what role are they going to play? So, so I will say this, uh, Senator, you know, before this, this is a horrible, tragic war. There were a lot of concerns about how China's influence had grown. Yes, they played a role between uh, Saudi Arabia and Iran. Uh, you'll note that since the conflict has begun, tragic, horrible, the country that people call to engage, to be involved directly, is the United States. And China is largely absent. Their engagement has been largely shallow. I would say I do not believe, Senator, that they, they don't want to see an enlargement in the war. And I think they are worried about uh, the potential for escalation. But at the same time, they really haven't weighed in with their diplomatic might in the situation involving the Houthis. They have not been as direct about uh, their concerns about escalation to Iran. They have raised it in certain circumstances, but not with the power and influence of a, a great power like China. Uh, I think we would expect them to do more uh, and uh, we continue to call on them as we do on other countries to make sure that their voices are felt. Um, I do acknowledge that this is a, a extremely delicate and worrisome time and we're doing Secretary Blinken in addition to, he's on this long trip through the Indo-Pacific, he's on the phone every night um, with the countries in Latin America to basically figure out our best way forward on Venezuela, but he's also working the phones in the Middle East to try to prevent a escalation and frankly, to move us towards um, a hostage exchange and a better set of circumstances in Gaza. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator